wants to sing on the deacon board. But I was a deacon for a short period of time. Deacon Moses sings it all the time, but the song says, Hallelujah. 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 You know that the star. Give God a hand clap of praise. 
Come on, everybody, open up your mouth, put those hands together. Give God praise like you know that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you don't know where you'd be. If you know you made it from one Sunday to another Sunday, I need you to open up your mouth and tell God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He kept you last Monday. He kept you this Tuesday. He kept you Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You ought to look at somebody and say, look at me. God kept me. And because he kept me, I'm going to give him a he kept me type of praise. Come on, make some noise in the sanctuary. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to do this. I want you to look to your left and your right. Tell somebody you're looking good today. I see you looking like you're looking. Amen. If you're wondering, if you're wondering, we're dressed in pink to bring awareness to breast cancer. But we want to start service out thanking God for the people that have joined this ministry and have successfully completed the Next Steps program. Can you make some noise for all of our graduates this morning? Come on, you can do better than that new home. If they're graduating this program, that means that they're ready to serve. And we know we need some more servants. The Bible says, you may be seated, the Bible says that the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And so today we want to thank God for these graduates as their names are called. I'm going to give it to you, Minister Peacock, at this time. Here we go. Sister Anderson. Ashandra Anderson. Sister Ashandra Anderson. Sister Carol Hood, Sister Carol Hood. <laughs> Sister Tarquisha Davis. <laughs> Sister Rana Mural, Sister Rana Mural. Sister Maria Riles. Sister Maria Riles. Sister Juanita Caffey. Sister Cornette Scott, Courtney Scott. Sister Tara Marlowe. got a lot of them. Sister Ka Kaya Washington. Kaija, come here. They put cursive on here. I couldn't read your name. Don't beat me up. Sister Katrina Washington. Sister Keisha Smith Bates. Sister Tamara Lovelace. Sister Javoria Walker. Sister Candace Carnegie. Sister Margaret Smith. Sister Shakinya Calhoun. Sister, now this got me. Sister Kabe Zaze. Did I say it right? 
Amen. Sister Alminty Moss. Sister Sharon Hardy. Brother Tim Flowers. Sister Jennifer Flowers. Sister Lavikia Martin. Sister Ardasia Martin. Sister Yatavia Hardley. Sister Rachel Williams. All right, we almost done. Sister Audrey Williams. Sister Maria E. Williamson Dennis. We got all of them, all that on there. <laughs> Sister Samaro Bowens. Sister Tara Lisa Casby. Amen. Sister Brittany Williams. Hey Amen. Can you give this class of 2023 a great big round of applause? Come on, let's make some noise for all of them. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all ready to have some church? Yes, sir. I got a feeling that this male court is going to take y'all higher. But I believe the more you clap, the higher they're going to take you. Can you give God praise for this male chorus? Come on, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. Depend on, Jesus. depend on Jesus. I learned, I learned trust in the Lord. Because I found out He will. I learned everlasting. I learned. I depend on Jesus. Hey, 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 I learned. And trust in the Lord. Yes, he goes. I found out. Oh, he will. I learned. I ever last. Oh, I learned. And depend on Jesus. Anybody ever learned? And trust in the Lord. Yes, he goes. I found out. Oh, what a oh, what a peace of mind. I learned to lean on Jesus everlasting. Oh, well, I learned. I learned to lean on Jesus. Hey, hey, I learned. And trust in the Lord. Yes, he was my bound out. Said he will. Oh, I learned. Oh, how sweet the walk. Oh, how sweet the walk in this narrow way. Leading on Jesus everlasting. I'm, oh, how bright the path for I learned to lean on Jesus everlasting. Yeah, I learned. And depend on Jesus. Hey, I learned. And trust in the Lord. Yes, he goes, I found out. I said I found out. I said I found out. I found out. All the time I was down and I couldn't get up. I was running from town, running from town, 
of the town. Jesus told me, go down to the church and I call on Jesus. Said I call on Jesus. Then Jesus came by and laid his hands on me. I said, Jesus came by. He laid his hands on me. He whispered in my ear. He said, listen, my child. He said, I'm still the same. He said, I'm still the same. Let me tell you one more thing. Said, I remember the time when I was leaning on Jesus. And I had a good job. But one day I woke up and my job was gone. I thought about my option. I said, Auntie, my job is gone. I need somebody. Somebody I can lean on. She said, come on, my child. Now you can lean on me. So I leaned on my auntie. I said, I leaned on my auntie. I said, I leaned on my auntie. But auntie was gone. I had to lean on Jesus. 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 For is my trust in I know he'll bring me out. I said, do you trust him? I tell me, tell me, tell me, do you trust him? Tell me, tell me, tell me, do you trust him? Tell me, tell me, tell me, do you trust him? He will provide. Oh, I love to lean on you. Oh, I learned. I learned. Give God the best praise you can give him. 
I said, give God the best praise you can give us. Look at somebody and say, ain't no secret what God can do. What he did for me. I know he can. I know he can. He can do it for you too. Now give God praise for your neighbor. All right. All right. If you can be seated, be seated. Can y'all give God praise for? See, I'm I'm calling uh, Dr. Gardner. His, his new nickname for me is Hollywood. And and he so sung that song. Did he or did he not? <laughs> I wait for the bank here. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said he learned to lean. And when you didn't lean on God, you got a testimony about what God can do. If there any testimonies in the house this morning, they can say that when I leaned on him, he showed up and showed up in my life. Amen. We're moving. We're moving. We're moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe there's somebody right now that needs to lean on God. I said, I believe there's somebody right now that needs to lean on God. And there's an old song that says, lead me, guide me along, along the way. It's prayer time. If you need prayer, come to the altar. Lord, if you lead, lead me out. Cannot stray. Y'all gonna help me sing it. Lord, let me walk. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Each day with thee. Oh, lead me. Oh, Lord, lead. Everybody at the altar, I need to hear you sing it. Come on, help us. Everybody open your mouth, cut the music. Lead me, lead, guide me along the way, along the way. For if you lead me, say, for if you lead me, I will not stray. I cannot stray, cannot stray. Come on, you ought to beseech the Lord. Say, Lord, let me walk. Lord, let me walk each day with thee. Each day with thee. Oh, lead me. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Lead me. My grandmama used to sing this song when she didn't know what she was going to do. The verse said, I am weak. And I need, I need your strength. Lord, I need your strength and power. Hallelujah. To help, help me over, help me over my weak, help me over my weakest hour. Somebody's there right now. She said, Lord, got me through. Guide me through the darkness. It's your face uh, that I want to see. She said it like this. She said, Lead me, lead me, oh Lord. Oh, lead me. I need y'all to help me one more time. If you need God right now, come on, say, it. Lead me. Yeah. Along the way, hallelujah, Lord, if you lead me, Lord, hallelujah, if you lead me, I will not stray, me, I cannot stray, come on, I need you to ask God real quick, say, Lord, let me walk, Lord, let me walk, each day with thee, each day, Hey, hey, lead me on. Father 
Father God, at this time of the morning, as we come before your altar, Father God, we come one for one thing, one for another, and then another for something else. But God, all of our request is in your power. And God, we ask you to lead us where you would have us to go. Yes. Father, let it not be our will, but let it be your will that be done. Yes. Forgive us our sins, O oh God, and our iniquities. But there may be many. But let your blood, O oh God, that you shed on Calvary wash it away. In our sickness, God, we ask you to heal us. And I would doubt, God, give us confidence, God, through your sacrifice on Calvary. Bless our homes, oh God, and maneuver through our children, God, to have them, oh God, to be able to be directed by us, the parent, and by your grace and mercy. Yes. Father, we thank you for the roof that has been placed over our head, the beds that we sleep in, and our sheep this morning wasn't our wine and sheets. You put food on our tables and Father, you allowed us to pay our bills, and afterwards you give us some lamb, yeah, some extra. The cup that has been running over, pressed down and shaken together. You bless this one through your mercies and through your grace. Now we come before the altar, God, and bless you, oh God, thanking you for what you've done so far. And still those that in need, oh God, as we come, we believe that you are deliverer of that which is good and that which is righteous. We proclaim your name because there's no other name under heaven where men might be saved except Jesus. That every tongue before him shall confess. Every knee before him shall bow down. That you overshadows all pain, iniquities, and strife. It's by you, O oh God, that we are to have our own being. And as we walk with you, God, guide us, lead us, help us not to lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, let us acknowledge you. Direct us, Lord, and have us not to direct ourselves. And as we look back over our lives, Father, as we think things over, they may not all have been like this morning. There may be some tears that have been in our eyes. There may have been some pain that have been in our body. There have been some doubts that have been in our mind. But all the blood, all the blood that was shed, oh God, in our behalf, we said thank you right now. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your move upon our lives. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Now, God, we ask you to renew a love binding in our relationships. A bound of love in our family life. Father, we ask you right now. Put into our spiritual minds, oh God, to remember the sacrifice you made. And let us so examine ourselves, God, that we be proven in your sight. And that your will be done in our lives. Now, God, right now, those that are standing before you all. Father, break barriers, tear down walls, open petitions, oh God, that may have access to you. And forgive us our sins and all of our iniquities. But Father, we know that all things are possible through you who strengthen us. Now, God, I pray now that every voice may be heard, every heart lifted, every spirit put on high. As we continue this service in your name, let a word come forth that would burn our spirits, even burn away in its iniquities and sin. God, now thank you. If we have 10,000 tongues, we cannot thank you enough for what you have done in our lives. We acknowledge your blessing. We acknowledge your grace. And oh God, for your mercy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them it's good. It's good. God's got you. I said hug somebody. Tell them God's got you. Hug somebody. Tell them God's got you. God's got you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
As they're getting to their seats, can we give God praise for them because they came to the altar for God to alter something? I believe if you can praise God for them, God will do it for you too. Come on, church. Make some noise for what God's about to do in their lives. This is a moment. I want to skip the announcements. We'll come back to it. But this is a moment where everyone can participate in service. This is the opportunity for you to show God how much he is worth to you. The Bible tells us that we can't give all in the same quantity, but we can give in the same quality. God loves a cheerful giver. So now is your moment, your opportunity to give to God what you know you owe to God. If God ain't done nothing for you, you ain't got to give nothing. But if God's been good to you, you ought to give unto the Lord as if you know he's done the exceeding and the abundantly above all that you can ask or think. So as our officers are getting in position for offering, we want you to put a smile on your face and give like you know that God has been good to you. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. If we could all stand, raise your power hand in the air and repeat after me for our pledge. Lord, Lord with, a cheerful heart, with a cheerful heart, I sow my seed. I sow my seed. Today, today, I planted in good ground. I planted in good ground. I believe, I believe my needs are met. My needs are met. And my family is blessed. And my family is blessed. And I'm expecting, I'm expecting a supernatural. Supernatural. Harvest in Jesus' name. Harvest in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. At this moment, we want to pause uh, as Sister Angela Babers comes to make a presentation uh, to the church at this time. Uh, Deacon Rollins, you can pull that out for me as she's coming. Let's give her our attention. Can we give God praise for her? pause in our program just for a few seconds for a pastor we are going to ask I have a um, a little small guest here the class of 89 sister Shirley Talbert if you will come at this time as she's coming we have to remember that this month not only this month but we have to remember that it is important that we have um, ladies and men um, our mammograms because it's important to have early detection so we want to make sure that everybody is aware, and in October, we'll definitely do that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, first of all, I would like to give my honor to God, who's the head of my life. I bring you greetings from Calvary Baptist Church down in Hertzburg, Alabama, where Reverend Nunn, C. Nunn, is my pastor. Um, thank you, my classmate, Angela for uh, this invite. I'm gonna speak shortly. I am a breast cancer survivor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I'm not gonna go too far into detail because I know the time is you know, winding down. But in 2012, October the 2nd, I was at work doing my regular job. I got a disturbing phone call from the doctor that I had been diagnosed, not diagnosed, well, um, my, um, the test that I had done came back positive for breast cancer. Um, that particular day, it was very disturbing to me. I cried, <laughs> I did, I went in the bathroom, they had to come get me out, my husband had to pick me up from work because I couldn't drive home. And on my way home, he told me, he said, you look up, because that is where all your help come from. Um, I come from a very large family. Um, I have four brothers, six, I mean, four sisters, six brothers. We all have the same parents. Um, my mother was never diagnosed. My sisters have never been diagnosed. I am the youngest. I'm 52 years old. Uh, my grandparents, they were never diagnosed, not to my knowledge. So when I was diagnosed, it was very devastating because I thought of, could this be the last of me? You know, how long could I live? You, you never know. Even though you can go to church all your life and praise God, you still have questions in the back of your mind. I had two beautiful children. My daughter was... Uh, just entering college at Tuskegee University in 2011. She has now graduated from Alabama A&M with her master's. My, yes. my son, he is now a sophomore in college in Huntsville at Drake. So he will be coming out this summer, doing two years. Um, God has just been so good to me, too good to me. And I question. God once. I asked him, why me? 
And he firmly gave me an answer, why not you? He told me I brought you to this. I'm going to take you through this. And he has done just that. When I was diagnosed in 2012, my oncologist was Dr. Farmer. She's from East Alabama. Well, about two or three years ago, I lost her to stomach cancer. Um, cancer, once you hear that word, you think of just death. How long am I going to live? How long am I going to live? Well, I had a sister-in-law. She called me, and she said, Shirley, she said, cancer all cancer is not death. I'm telling you, the struggle for me, it was not hard. It was more mentally for me. Because I knew the God that I served. I trusted him. I trusted him. The cancer that I had, it was very aggressive. Meaning that I had to have surgery immediately. I had two options. One option was I could have a mastectomy, which would I have the right breast removed, which was only tissues. Or they could go in and just remove the uh, lump, lumpectomy, which was just a tumor. I told my surgeon, I told the pathologist, I told the oncologist, I want to live. I want to live. I went in October the 9th. I had surgery. I was out for two weeks. I took an additional two weeks off for work. When I went back to work, I was told that from my oncologist and all that my treatment was be optional. Optional for chemo, optional for radiation. I said, well, I want to do it. I had four short treatments of chemotherapy. I think the drug that I was taking was Cytoxin. It was one of the most deadly ones it was because when they removed the tumor and they put it under the microscope, the medicine that they had, every drug that they would use, it was not fighting that cancer, that tumor. So until this day, I have not been on any medication whatsoever. No. Most people would take this drug called temp, temp something, I don't know, tamoxifen, whatever it was. I never was able to take that drug. I, I didn't have any sickness. I went through it every day. I worked every day. I worked until like 2.30, and then I went to the hospital for my treatments. Um, I had 35 rounds of uh, radiation to my chest wall. I work every day. And then on top of that, then on top of that, um, my oncologist had told me, she said, Ms. Tarver, she said, I don't know what type of woman you are. I told her I am a child of God, and that's who I trust. I trust him. I trust him. And until this day, until this day, I've been able to go back out. I played softball. I traveled playing softball. I worked. Um, I never stopped trusting God. I praise him every day, every day, every moment I get. And one more thing. When I had my first treatment, I, I, my hair started falling out. My hair grew back so beautifully. My husband shaved my head. So I asked my husband, I said, are you going to shave your head? He said, no, I'm not going to shave my head, but I'm going to continue to support you 100%. But later on, he shaved all of his hair off as well. So I, I want to say to the ladies out there and some men, please get your checkup because I caught mine myself. Uh, I felt it in my breast. I went to the doctor, and I told him, I said, something is going on. And I'm telling you, I have another mammogram that's coming up. I have it once a year. Uh, it's going to be October the 20th. 
And I've already praised God that everything is going to be all right. It's going to be all right. And another thing that I had to do, and I'm going to my seat, you have to surround yourself with positive people. Positive people. I'm here to tell you, you've got to surround yourself with positive people. I didn't want nobody to put on a pity party for me. Oh, she has breast cancer. Oh, she has No, 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 no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. I rejoice this thing. I went in it, fighting it. I'm fighting it now. And if it's God's will and I've already claimed it, come October the 20th, it will be 11 years cancer free. Thank you. Come on, let's give God praise for it. that you um, take your phones out, making sure that they're still on silent, but please turn your flashlight on because we want to do this moment for all of the warriors that were unable to be here or those that have passed on, and um, there's going to be a, just a few minutes of a memorial for those. I'm sure that cancer has affected so many lives here, um, and we just want to do a memorial. Thank you. At this time, we're going to go ahead and make a mention of all of our um, survivors, survivors that are here today. If you would, please stand. All the breast cancer survivors. Come on, make some noise for them. We ask that they continue to stand as these gifts are coming. We want to celebrate all these testimonies in the room of how they could be dead and gone, but the Lord let them live. Come on, make some noise for them. Amen. Music was a little bit off, but I appreciate you for your survivor. Thank you. Amen. One more time, make some noise. If someone was wondering why we were wearing pink is to bring more awareness to breast cancer. And we know that everyone has someone in your life that has been impacted by breast cancer. It's my prayer that God will comfort you and keep you even in this season where you remember those whom have had the battle and did not make it. But it was a blessing to hear the testimony of this great sister, 11 years cancer-free. Make some noise for her. Amen. Is your husband, is that your husband with you? He's not, okay, I saw another bald head, so I was, <laughs> was going to say, is that him? But we thank God for your husband as well because going through cancer can be very hard. And it's a blessing when you have a spouse that will support you. Can we make some noise for her husband, even in his absence as well? Hallelujah. Look, I, I didn't been in, let you get the mic. You've been told your testimony. You already know it. I know how. <laughs> Stepped in the water. Stepped in the water. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Please give your attention to the screens for our weekly announcements at this time. Streaming now. This is New Home News. Welcome to New Home by Max, the home where we embrace and empower and employ people to do God's work. So take out your pen and your pad because note takers are move makers. New Home Improvement, join us Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. on New Home Strong Virtual. 
We are elated to celebrate 133 years of being new home strong. This month, we want to know, what does new home strong mean to you? Oh, I'm glad you caught me on my way out. New home strong to me is family. It's a, it's a culture. It's like a, a, an Indians uh, that have tribes. Uh, they, they all work together for one main reason and one goal. We're not perfect here, but we're not playing either. New Home Strong to me is very intergenerational. It's the intergenerational culture that Pastor has created to embrace, empower, and employ the work of God. And we have a month full of celebration and activities, but that doesn't stop our work in the community. On Sunday, October 8th, we will join Engage Christian Church for their pastoral anniversary at 2 p.m. Wall Mount Meg's Fire Station Number 1 will host Fire Prevention Open House on Tuesday, October 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. with Freddy Fire Engine, photo taking, inflatables, demonstrations, and more. Join the Women's Ministry for their annual Walk of Life 5K at the Riverfront Celebration downtown Montgomery, Saturday, October 21st. This is a family event and all are welcome to participate. Registration forms are available each Sunday until October 15th. New Home Out Meg Senior Center Dance Class, the CAS Dance Rehearsals will be announced soon. Also, the seniors will be going to the fair for Senior Day on October 12th, leaving the church around 8 a.m. and returning around 12.30. All seniors, let's go play bingo. Birthright Theater Productions presents Not My Sister's Keeper at the Davis Theater at 7 p.m. October 14th. Doors open at 6 p.m. and the pre-show starts at 6.30. Tickets are on sale now for $20. You can see Sister Kiara Brown. Galatians 6.2 tells us, Carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Praying for one another is a powerful way for us to bear one another's burdens. So let's continue to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ because it's them today, but it could be us tomorrow. We know this was a lot of information, but for your convenience, we have calendars in the lobby. You can also stay connected through our virtual spaces on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube on demand at New Home Mount Meigs. This has been Monica with New Home News Network. Thank you for tuning in. Hey Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise for audio visual, visual team. I do want to, and we have a lot of things to discuss, but there's a few things that we definitely want to put before you. Um, I want to, um, just one more time, let's give God praise for the graduates of the Next Step class. Amen. We're excited about them uh, graduating from this class. I believe it's going to enable them to serve and serve well. Amen. Look at somebody say serve, 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 serve. All right. I also want to put before you, church, it is Clergy Appreciation Month. God has blessed us to have some associates that are amazing and on fire for God. I was not here last Sunday, but our associates preached their faces off. Can we make some noise for all of our ministerial associates? Come on, make some noise for them. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And it showcases the maturity of a church when they can handle uh, service, worshiping God, getting a word, and the pastor not being there. So can you give God praise for yourself? Amen. I also want to put this before you. T-shirts are in. Anybody who ordered some uh, new home swag and you have not gotten it yet, uh, it'll be in the fellowship hall right after service. They got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff uh, to give to you if you've already paid. If you have not paid, guess what? They need your money. Amen. Amen. I want to also do this before our deacons come with some great news on behalf of our, our church ministry. Minister Peacock, if you can get ready with that mic. Sister Kiera, come this way. Uh, we're getting ready in the month of October to celebrate 134 years of a church anniversary. Can we give God praise for that? 
Amen. We have some guest ministers that are going to come and bless us in a mighty way. Uh, Pastor John Hillary of the Love and Peace Baptist Church will be at us at 8 o'clock on the fourth Sunday of this month. And Pastor Richard uh, Russell of Promised Land Missionary Baptist Church will be with us at 10 o'clock uh, the fourth Sunday of this month. So we're going to have some church. We're going to have some fun at our birthday because God's blessed us for 134 years to be this great ministry that we are. New home, can you make some noise? It's about to be your birthday. Awesome, awesome. Now, let me do this. I'm coming to you, Sister Kiera, but I believe that if anybody supports people out of this church, it ought to be this church supporting people out of this church. I believe that we are a network of people that God has called together for a reason, and that reason goes beyond Sunday morning service. So I want to do this real quick. I, allow me to reintroduce someone to you. Uh, you don't call her anything else. She is now Councilwoman. Can you say, hey, Councilwoman Riley? Stand up so they can see that pink. Y'all make some noise for the home team. Councilwoman of district number four. God is good and all the time. Hey there, Councilwoman. I said, Councilwoman. Hey there, Councilwoman. <laughs> But that's not all that we have going on. There's some great things happening in this church because there's some people that are being led by God in this church. And one of them is about to bless the mic. Sister Kiara Robinson, uh, she is the owner. Brown, Brown. excuse just, me. Brown, Brown. I forgot that part. I forgot that part. You ain't had to announce that. Kiara Brown. I would Brown. like to get married again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, okay, all right. We're going we're gonna to do that. All right. So, Sister Kiara Brown is the founder of an amazing, amazing company that's doing some amazing things in the city of Montgomery. I want you to hear it from her. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. New home. Look, I love that my pastor is a man of God that supports the people that serve in his ministry. I think he's told you guys everything. But <laughs> um, we do have a show titled Not My Sister's Keeper, October the 14th, this Saturday, at the Davis Theater. And the show is about love wins, but grace sustains. We all need grace. And sometimes I know we've dealt with things or we made decisions, and now we're like, okay, well, those decisions are in the past. But those past decisions sometimes will come back and bite us. All right? And so that's what this show is about. So hopefully you, your family, your coworkers, your church, because the church that has the most members in that building on Saturday night will get $500 to their youth department. Now, it's so funny because when I've been trying to talk to pastors and different leaders, they're like, what church do you go to? And I go, new home. And they're like, oh, well, never mind. You guys are going to win. <laughs> so y'all got a lot of churches not want to compete with us. And that's okay. But definitely keep coming out, keep supporting, keep sharing it. I hope to see as many of you as possible. Um, but if you cannot make it, definitely tell somebody else because I do think it's going to bless someone. I've been told by Deacon Durham that the shows are pretty good. It's like, it is. <laughs> I think he told me last time it's up there with Tyler Perry. So if you haven't seen it, come out so that you can see what he's talking about. Thank you. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, it's going to cost us something to get Oh, it there. does. I'm sorry. It costs $20. <laughs> and that's pretty good. It's very $20, good. $20, okay? Awesome. So, it's $20, October the 14th. Yes. Do you have tickets? I do have tickets on me. But I will be in the Providence Center with the kids. So, after church, you guys can come over there and get your tickets. Or you can go online at brt.productions.com. All right, we're going to share the flyer. Last year, uh, she did a, a segment of this um, big, it's a big story. She's doing a session at a time. It's almost like watching Netflix. So every year, she allows us to see another part of these characters being developed and their life story. And uh, we, we challenged for about 30 people to be there. We had a little over 30. Now, this year, I'm challenging 50 people to meet me there, okay? Y'all hear me? All right, October the 14th. Somebody shout out the 14th. If you're single, you can come. If you're married, you can come. If you want something wholesome to do versus Bootsy on yesterday, you can come, okay? Nudge your neighbor and say, we coming, we coming, we coming. All right, meet me, meet me there. Uh, beat me there. Davis Theater, that's a big old theater. 
And if anybody gonna support Sister Kiara, we ought to support Sister Kiara because that's our family and that's what the home team does. Because we're new homes. All right, thank you, family. Uh, at this moment, I want to get out the way uh, for our chairman. Our chairman is coming, and Deacon Rollins is coming. They got some updates for the church family. God's been doing some major things. Deacon Rollins just handed it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Deacon Rollins, the chairman, do both of them. Do both of them. Hey, but I want to just again encourage the church to support Sister Kier. Uh, that's an amazing play. And uh, what I will do, I'm going to donate 10 tickets to seniors that want to come that we'll pay for it. So if you're a senior and you want to go, see Sister Wright, and we'll take care of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so we're about 10, Sister Wright, so Sister Kier. So I, it's an amazing play. But I didn't stand to say that. The Lord just says, give, give 10 of them, Durham. So we want to just bring you up to date to what's going on in the church. Uh, we have... Uh, this church, we've been in this sanctuary for 20 years, 2003. And so the church needs a little paint and powder and some beautification. So we have contracted with a painting contractor, local contractor from Mount Meigs, right, Rollins? Mount Meigs, we're doing business with people in the community. They are contracted to paint the church. So this week, if you have ministries, the senior ministry, as the choir, if different auxiliaries are out here, just be mindful there are painting going on. So, you know, we don't want you to touch something and leave with something. So just be mindful that there's painting going on. And there's some other things going on in the church. We bought a modular building uh, about seven months ago, and it has been an ordeal. I want to thank Deacon Postel for being so diligent. Deacon Postel has ran around the city of Montgomery. It's a challenge, but we are finally getting past it. Uh, the modular building. We're exploding. We're having to put chairs out. We're having our youth are in the fitness center. We have a lot going on. So this modular building this Tuesday is going to be skirted. And we got Alabama Power coming out, running po power to the building. But there's activities going on with your tithe and your offering and the pastor's vision. So we just want to encourage you to continue to support the church. And we're doing what we can to make this edifice last as long as it can. So thank you for being good stewards, and thanks the pastor and his leadership for his vision. And again, thank y'all. Be courteous and mindful this week, and we're going to have a good time Saturday night at 7 o'clock at the Davis Theater. God bless you. We're going to win that 500. Hey Amen. Make some noise one more time, one more time. All right. God is doing a great work. Uh, time is being uh, well spent, and I believe that we got some more singing and some preaching to hear. Did you come for the word of God this morning? I said, did you come for the word of God this morning? Amen. Our young, our young saints, you're dismissed at this time. You're dismissed at this time. Amen. Hallelujah. As we sing this song, I want you to think about all that God has done for you. I want you to think back to some of the places you used to be that could have taken you out. Some of the people you were connected to that could have took everything that you had. But you served the type of God that was able to do some stuff for you that nobody else could do. I wish I had a praying church through here that could thank God for what he's doing and what he has already done in your life. Jesus Sweetest name I know oh, King of kings Oh, he's Lord of Lord. Born in a manger. Come on, Doc. No room for the end. Yeah. Look at this baby boy. My God gave to us. Lord, I'm glad. All right, we're going to do this again. I feel like my mama when I was in the youth choir. Y'all got to say, it's all right, that's all right. Come on, y'all say, that's all right, that's all right. 
got to play this. somebody say he did it for me he did it for me come on tell them say he did it for me he did it for me say my soul made me whole yeah. oh I'm so glad he did it for me I'm so glad he did it for me oh let me sing it they whipped him yeah, they whipped him Not one time yeah, Did the Lord say one word He shed his blood oh, 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 Shed his blood for me yeah. Oh Oh, I can't imagine, can't imagine the pain that the Lord took for me. Oh, say, Lord, I'm glad, Lord, I'm glad you did it for me. Oh, oh, oh Lord, I'm glad, Lord, I'm glad you did it for me. Oh. Glory. You did it for me. Glory. Did it for me. Glory. You did it for me. Glory. Took nails in your hands. Glory. Nails in your feet. Glory. You did it for me. Glory. Oh, you did it for me. Glory. Shed your blood. Glory. You did it for me. Glory. I didn't deserve it. Glory. But he did it for me anyway. You hung down, Glory. you bled and died, Glory. and you did it for me, Glory. you did it for me. Glory. I want to take time to tell you, Glory. oh, thank you, Lord, Glory. because you didn't have to do it, Glory. but you did it anyway. Glory. You did it for me, Glory. you did it for me, yeah, I did it for Glory. me. You did it for me. Glory. If it had not been for the Lord Glory. who was on my side, Glory. I'd still be where I was. Glory. But he did it for me. Glory. Came and saved my soul. Glory. He kept my mind. Glory. He made me whole. Glory. He did it for me. Glory. I could have thrown in the towel. <laughs> but the Lord showed up. And he made the enemy stop it. Yeah, he blocked it for me. He healed my body. He kept my mind. He did it for me. Find you a neighbor and say he did it for me. And if he did it for me, I know he can do it for you. Yeah, he did it for me. I didn't deserve it. But he did it anyway. I didn't deserve it. Touch my body. Help my mind. Looked around this morning and my family was fine. He kept my house. He kept me in the cradle of his arms. Yeah, he did it for me. Yeah, he gave me everything I need. He gave me everything I need. I could have been lost. I could have been dead. I could have been crazy. I could have lost my mind. But he kept me. Yes, he did. He kept me. Yes, he did. If it had not been for Jesus, if it had not been for Jesus, can't nobody keep me. Can't nobody hold me. Can't nobody rock me. Can't nobody do it for me. Yeah, he did it for me. Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. You did it for me. Yeah. 
if you take a moment and look back over your life, Lord, I'm glad. Oh, Lord, I'm not better than anybody else, but I'm grateful today because, Lord, I'm glad. If they only knew what I've done, if they only knew where I've been, it was nobody but Jesus. Lord, I'm glad. He did it for me. 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 I wasn't good enough, but he did it anyway. I didn't deserve it, but he did it anyway. Didn't have the credentials. Did not have the mind. But the Lord anointed me for such this time. He he did it. He did it. He did it. Oh, for me. I'm still here. Kept by the grace of God. I'm still here. Kept by the grace of God. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I'd be. I don't know what I'd be doing. But I'm here today as a living testimony. God will. God will. God is able to turn your life around. God is able to shift your circumstance. And it ain't no secret what God can do. What he done for us, he can do for you. He'll restore you. He'll make it all right. He'll make you over. He'll make it better. Just lift up your head towards the hills from which coming your help. Cause all, all of your help is coming from the Lord. Keep trusting Him. Keep having faith in Him. Yeah, He did it for me. they care. He'll hold you in the midnight up. Tears streaming down. God will. He'll step right in. He'll make it all right. 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 Encourage somebody. Tell them it ain't over till God says it's over. He'll do some stuff that'll blow your mind. He'll do some stuff that'll make you have to depend on him. Because when you've been down enough, it's the moment God will step in and he'll shift things. I need to testify. Lift your hand and say, he did it for me. I was down and out. But he did it for me. I didn't know where to go. But he did it for me. Couldn't depend on my friend. Couldn't depend on my family. But when I looked up to the Father, he made a way out of no way. Turn my darkness. Turn my darkness in the day. He did it for me. I'm glad, Lord, I'm glad you did it for me. I'm not worthy, God, 
But Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. Ah. Anybody got a testimony that God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him? It could be all types of opposition, but I come to tell you, if you keep your faith in God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for the grateful folk this morning. Yeah. Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. You did it for me. I said, I want to hear the grateful folk tonight that can testify he's been good to you say Lord, Lord I'm glad you did it for me folk will do stuff to try to mess up everything you got going on but the Lord will block it yes he will Lord I'm glad you did it for me all you do is help but they seem to always try to hurt you Lord I'm glad Lord I'm glad you did it for me yeah for me, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. Yeah. Good God Almighty, this thing that got good to me. Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. Folk trying to figure out how you got blessed. Folk trying to figure out how you drive and what you drive. It was nobody, so Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. If you knew my story, you wouldn't hack the fool about my glory. Lord, I'm glad Brought me from nothing to something Brought me from oatmeal to nothing I wish I had somebody That could shout It was nobody but God It was nobody but God It was nobody but God Grab your Bibles. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Did it for me. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 Nails in his hand. Yeah. Spear in his side. Yeah. That Friday morning, he was hung between two feet. But that Friday night, he died. Hung his head. For you and me, he died. While we were yet sinners, he had already saved our soul. But the old preacher said, Early Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power, healing power, redeeming power, saving power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it for you. He did it for you. My God, my God. Lord, I'm glad. Lord, I'm glad. You did it for me. Everybody he did it for, come on, give God a great big praise. Come on, come on, give it to God. Give it to God, give it to God. Come on. He's been stretching you all year long. Come on. You done seen promotions. You done seen greater platforms. You done took greater positions. This is your moment to give it back to God. Come on. Don't steal his credit. It was nobody but God who blessed you and your family. Open up your mouth and give it to God. Thank you, Lord. Grab your Bibles. Yes. Grab your Bibles. Get to the book of Luke.
Lord, you are good. Yeah. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. Luke chapter 9. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Even if I try, cause you've been so good to me. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. 23. If you got to say, uh huh. Need some time, say, wait on me. All right, look at this screen. Look at this screen. English Standard Version, one verse for your hearing. It says, and he said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor. The preacher's going to preach about. I'm all in. Tell your neighbor, you got to make a decision today to be all in. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As we are endeavoring to continue in this series, I'm excited about what God's about to give us. But if you're not prepared for what God has for you, you won't get it. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this moment. We're praying that every heart is open to receive what thus says the Lord. It's our prayer, dear God, that they will be convicted and corrected, but they'll also get connected. My prayer simply is less of me and more of thee. In the mighty name of Jesus, we all shout amen. amen. Uh, we are endeavoring in this month to find some of the latest and the greatest hits of every decade that we are celebrating. We thank God for this church because this church ministers to over five generations. We've got so many generations that we've decided each month, or rather each Sunday rather, uh, to celebrate certain decades by uh, finding not only songs that fit particularly the decade in worship, but also uh, finding potentially a song that God can utilize to get a message across to his people. As I begin to uh, even start this sermon, I think it's necessary for me to give a large shout out to everyone born in the years of 1970s and 1980s. Can you make some noise? Yeah, yeah. They're my fault right there. Um, and so for everybody who's listening, I want you to know that many of us were millennials so we can stop saying millennials don't come to church. We got more generations to think about now. But as we begin to look through all of the hits of the 70s and the 80s, there was one that stuck out to me because one of my favorite artists uh, by the name of P.J. Morton had the opportunity to cover this song again. This song, it was released in 1977. It says something like, how deep is your love? How deep is your love? I really mean to learn. Because we're living in a world of fools that are breaking us down when they all should let us be. For we belong, you and me. He says something like, I know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel the touch and how you touch me in the pouring rain. And the moment that you wander far from me, I want to feel you in my arms again. I love this song. It was released by the Bee Gees, three uh, Caucasian brothers who had the ability to sing so harmoniously. As you look at it on YouTube, you'll hear their blended vocals as they ask the question, how deep is your love? This particular text, family, is a scripture, or rather this song, is written not only to ask you how deep is your love because we live in a society where everybody says they love somebody but don't love nobody. They ask the question, how deep is your love? And then they answer the question in the song. And as they talk to the brother, as he wrote these melodious melodies, he asked him how and or why, what were you trying to figure out while you were singing this song? He said, I penned this song to ask people, are you really committed to me? And today I feel like in the 20th, uh, the 2023 year that God is asking the question, are you committed to me? God, God asked the question because just like my brother from the Bee Gees as he wrote this song, he understood that you can have a lot of fans but not a lot of followers. 
he, he understood that you can have a lot of folk around you, but they really ain't for you. I wish I had a praying church. He, he, he understood there's a lot of folk that come to church, but don't know Christ. A lot of folk that read the Bible but don't know the author. There's a lot of folk who have a major, a master's, and a doctorate in churchianity, but they don't know Christianity. You give some folk the mic, they can give you the first giving honor to God who's the head of my life. All of that good stuff, wine and board and cooling sheets and, and a charge to keep our hair, but they don't know God. And so as he wrote this song, he was asking the question to whatever female could hear it. Are you just a fan of mine or are you really trying to commit to me? If I can borrow a song from my girl, Beyonce, she had a song that said, if you like it, you ought to put up. I knew y'all knew more than Amazing Grace. Come on here. You ought to put a ring on it. And I believe the question God has is how long are you going to live single while trying to be with me? Y'all come closer. The Lord is saying, how long are you going to date me and not commit to me? God says, you want all these husband duties out of me, all these wifely duties out of me, but you ain't going to commit. I'm talking to somebody and you don't want to hear me. You want him to bless you in everything you do. You want him to provide for you, but you won't commit to him. God says, just like some of my beautifully uh, sun-kissed black women and men in the room, uh, he says, you can't commit to me and come to me any type of way. I know he's sitting next to you, just go on here, wave your head. Yeah. Because there is a way that you show that you're committed. Here it is. The text says, as Jesus Christ is telling the disciples, I'm departing, I'm leaving now. He says to all of them, if anyone would commit to me, come after me. Let him or her deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. I love this child of God because it's interesting as we look at this particular pericope, we understand that God says there's some things that you need to deal with if you're going to be with me. What is the first thing he says? Number one, you got to deal with yourself. No takers or move makers, write it down. You got to deal with yourself because the problem with most of us is we're too busy dealing with everybody else. We don't deal with ourselves. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. I'm talking to a crew of people that I know. As soon as you take a picture, you flip to a filter. And God says, if you don't like the sight of your raw you, you need to do something to your raw you. Y'all ain't with me this morning. This one right here going to slap somebody upside the head and stump on their pinky toe. I want you to get this child of God. You got to be real with yourself and the reality that all of us have flaws. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you're not perfect, you got something to be working on for yourself. Here's a little acrostic that I ran upon. Uh, ran upon. I, I, I heard this uh, acrostic for self. It says if you're going to deal with yourself, you got to deal with your sin. You got to deal with your evil. You got to deal with your lust. And you got to deal with your flesh. See, y'all acting real sanctimonious and spooky and sanctified this morning. I know you dress for church, but let's be real. I want to talk to the real you and the reality that there's some yous inside of you that need to get out of you. All of us have some desires that we should not desire in the eyesight of God. And listen to me, child of God. God is not saying that you got to be perfect, but God says you ought to be practicing what you act like you practice on Sunday morning. Y'all don't want none of this. See, 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 you'll say all this to your boyfriend, my homegirls, but you won't say it to yourself when it comes to your relationship with God. You can't do any old thing and think you're going to be with me. Y'all said it to him yesterday. Now you need to hear God say it to you. You can't be my child and do any old thing. I'm so tired. Oh, Lord. I'm at home now. See, I was... I was away last week. I couldn't say everything I wanted to say. I'm tired of baptizing dry devils. 
and they come up wet devils. I, I'm tired of praying for folk that don't even lean on God. And when God don't manifest it for them, now they don't believe in God. I need all of us to grow up and commit to what God said we need to commit to. We're living in a world now where there's wars and rumors of wars. We're living in a world now where there's more uh, that you can see on television that will tell you that Jesus is coming back. And the problem with most of us is that we procrastinate versus being ready for his return. You don't have another year. You don't have another decade. You don't have another century to play around with the things of God and then think God's going to accept you in. Now, now, child of God, the Bible says there'll be some folk that'll be in church sitting on your row right next to you saying, Lord, 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 but they're going straight to hell. I need somebody up in here to realize that the Bible says everybody ain't going to make it in. So it's time for you to stop dating God and commit to God. I need all of my folk that have made up your mind. I didn't only get a preach of my hand, but I really gave God my heart. I need you to shout it. I'm all in. Yeah, y'all ain't want this one. Look at somebody and say he's bad. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says. <laughs> The Bible says you have to deny yourself. What's interesting about this is in order for you to deny yourself, you got to learn first to be real with yourself. See, some of y'all been lying so long, you don't know what the truth is about your own self. I need a witness up in the house. See, 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 see. You know what, what, what's wrong with you when you're attempting to address what's wrong with you. But when you're a person that allows your wrong to be wrong every year and you try to make your wrong in the right and just say that's just how I'm is. No baby. That, that ain't just how you is. God has better in store for you if you do the work on you. Uh, God can bless you. That's why you've been down in the dumps. That's why you don't have what you ought to have. That's why you haven't been able to get the blessing that God wants to bestow to you. It's because you have not yet worked on you I'm tired of arrogant folk who are not compassionate hollering stuff like I'm just keeping it real no you're not you're just trifling and you say everything you think get your life together I'm tired of folk hollering I'm just trying to help you figure it out no you're not you're just trying to be in my business so you can tell everybody else what I got I'm tired of these type of folk that act like they got your best interest at heart but they ain't swept around their own front door your house look a mess but you looking at mine mind your business take care of yourself God says if you're going to be all in you got to handle yourself you got to handle it but then he says, not only must you handle yourself, point number two for the note takers, he says, you're going to have to handle some suffering. I need more volume. You're going to have to handle some suffering. It's interesting, family, because this is a curse word for many of us because we don't like to hear suffer. Not dealing with us anyway. I need you to turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to have to suffer. The Bible lets us know that the rain falls on the just as well as the unjust. And what that means, shout of God, especially when we get into theology and we start talking about uh, theodicy, that question of why do bad things happen to good people, the reality is uh, you ain't no good anyway. God is using your circumstance to bring out of you what needs to come out of you. And so all of us, good or bad, happy or sad, joy or pain, rain uh, or sunshine, we're all going to have to go through something. Jesus Christ said, man, born of a woman is of a few days and those days are full of trouble and if Jesus had to go through trouble then guess what you do too who do you think you are who do you think you fooling if you don't think you're going to have to go through some stuff nudge your neighbor and say we going to have to get through this there, there's some suffering he says let him deny himself and take up his cross daily uh, the problem with most of us is that we have forgotten that the cross is a sign of suffering. For many of us in the 21st century, we now see crosses as a sign of style. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why you bought your homeboy a cross, your cousin and them got a cross, everybody got a cross but ain't been to church. 
Can I tell you why I know they ain't been to church? Because they buying crosses with Jesus still on it and Jesus ain't on the cross. I wish I had somebody that knew. They took him off the cross Friday. He rose early Sunday. Jesus ain't supposed to be on no cross. You might well go sell that thing at the pawn shop. Don't let me find out Jesus still on your cross. I'm going to snatch that thing up off you. He ain't on the cross. Making my Jesus look like he got a six pack. My Jesus had a stomach just like mine. He ain't on the cross. We buy crosses because they look good. Somebody said, my Jesus, baby Jesus. <laughs> we, we wear crosses because they're trendy. But the cross was not a sign of being cool or swagged out. It was not something that you bought to flex. You, you got to understand, Jesus is talking to some people who had the opportunity to see some people hung, bleed, and die on the cross. He's writing this message. He's talking to these people in the book of Luke. He's talking to his disciples that watch people die gruesomely on the cross. It was not pretty. It was painful. It was not sexy. Uh, it was terrible. God wants us to remember the cross. Take up your cross daily. God, God says, God says, the first thing you got to understand about your cross is that it must be accessible to you. Because the cross has to be taken up, not put down. Uh oh, uh oh. So it needs to always be by your side. He says, literally, you got to take the memory of the cross with you everywhere you go. That if you're going to handle yourself and say no to stuff you ought not go to and say yes to me, it's because you're reminded of what I did on Calvary. I wish I had somebody here that when you think about all the blood he shed, when you think about all the pain he endured, you'd understand I can't fall into what I was in because he saved me. He died just for me not to go back into that. There are moments where you will be tempted and God says, if you're going to, 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 to outlast and overcome the temptation, you got to be reminded of the cross. He says it has to be accessible, but then he says it has to be personal. He said, take up his cross. That's your cross. Can I tell you your cross uh, doesn't have on it what my cross has on it. See, see, the picture, the imagery of what Jesus Christ did on Calvary was he nailed every one of our sins to the cross. And he allowed his blood to cover our sin because his blood was his love and love covers a multitude of sin. Can y'all come closer to me? And what God says is on my cross will be some things, but on your cross will be some different stuff. Y'all ain't with me. Everybody wasn't a liar and everybody wasn't a cheater. Everybody wasn't a drunk and everybody wasn't a druggie. But everybody has a cross uh, with your stuff on it. And God says, I need you to keep this cross ever so close to you because every now and then when you get beside yourself, you need to be reminded of what I brought you out of. Yeah. All right, I'll tell it to you this way. I was a young boy, I was a young boy, and we lived in the neighborhood. I didn't know it was called this until I moved out of it. Uh, it was called Buckingham. We lived in Buckingham, and while we were living in Buckingham, uh, we, we had the liberty at this time. This was the old school days when you could actually let your children ride their bikes in the neighborhood and know that they were going to be okay. I rode my bike from the back of Buckingham all the way to Seth Johnson. Y'all, I was having fun. I was racing my cousins, and uh, we were out on the bikes. They were good mountain bikes. Y'all remember them old good mountain bikes you get for Christmas? You wake up, and they had the nice tread on the tires like you was popping wheelies, but you wasn't doing nothing. Yeah, I had those type of bikes, and we're, we're riding our bikes. We didn't put them in the fifth gear. We driving real fast, and for some oddball reason, I made the decision that I was going to ride my bike across the playground. Now, any of y'all that know the old school playground, it did not have all this neat tire stuff that they have now so that when kids fall, they don't get hurt. Now, if we fell, we had scars and there was plenty of blood. And so I decided I was going to ride my bike through the playground. My little sister back there, you can verify it. I'm telling the truth. And as soon as my wheel got into the stones or the rocks in the playground, the, the bike immediately stopped and my body kept on going. 
Uh, Brother Brandon, when I finally got up, I was calling mama and I was nowhere close to mama. There was blood dripping down my knees and child of God, it was the worst pain I had dealt with because now I had to ride my bike all the way home with the air hitting my wound and I found out that after that, after my auntie came in and slapped Vaseline everywhere, after my granny came talking about some butter I don't know what they do but they did it I don't know but now I can look at my knees and I see scars that will always remind me of how when I was hurt but God healed me and I believe there's somebody here that has a cross uh, that looks like some scars uh, because God wants you to be reminded uh, of what could have taken you out but God kept you anyway he wants you to be reminded of what could have taken all that you had, but God kept you anyway. I'm looking for the folk in the room that got some scars to wave your hand at your boy and thank God for your scars because they're a reminder of what God did for you. He says, your cross must be accessible. Your cross must be personal. But lastly, he says, your cross must be continual. He says, take up his or her cross daily. Um, maybe I'm the only person here. Um, I'm 35. I'm a little young, but I got an old folk mind. And uh, you tell me something, you're going to have to tell me a couple of times. Because I ain't going to remember. And... Um, I write it down. I forget where I wrote it down. <laughs> I got anybody up in the room like me that you just need a little help, uh, set a reminder, or set an alarm or something, because I just don't know what we was talking about. And we serve the type of God who says you're going to have to take up this cross daily. But for people like me, you got to take it up hourly and minutely and secondly because you're going to forget about what God told you not to do. And in order for you to not forget what God told you not to do so that you can do what God told you to do, he says this cross must be continual. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you might not have to pick up your cross as much as your neighbor, but you're going to have to pick up your cross. Every time temptation comes, you're going to have to pick up your cross because for every blessing, there's going to be another opportunity for the enemy to throw some baggage at you. He wants you to be reminded of what you used to do. He wants you to go back to what you used to do, but all of us ought to make up our mind that we're going to keep our cross real close so that anytime the devil says, hey, I got something shining for you, you can remember what grandmama said it might shine it might glitter but it sure ain't cold it looked good but it ain't good to me you gotta be reminded of your testimony so that you don't fall back into the mess God already pulled you out of take up your cross daily and what does he say follow me now now, now um let me pause here parenthetically. I want to add this on to point number two for the note takers. Um, if you're going to take up your cross daily, uh, one of the things that you got to make sure you know how to do is control your cravings. Um, um, for those of you that are in the room, uh, I want you to be self-aware about your level of maturity uh, because all of us can't consume the same things and be who God called us to be. I I'm telling you, I can watch BMF and still praise the Lord, but all of us can't. I I I'm telling you, I can watch power in the power book and every other thing with drug, money, mobs, gangsters, and all that, and I still know to do what God called me to do, but for some of us, we're not mature enough to take in certain things and still do what God said if you're not mature enough stay away from it boo boo your ear gate your eye gate they have the potential to ruin you if you can't properly process what you're allowing to come in it's better for you to be safe than sorry God says check yourself before you wreck yourself because for some of us, it's not just entertainment. Unfortunately, for some of us, in our lack of maturity, it becomes knowledge and information that we try to apply. 
I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you more. When I was growing up in, in middle school, uh, I became an avid reader. If it were not for what my parents did for me every summer, I would not read the word like I read the word. My parents found out that there was a new book out. And they heard that it was interesting and that all the young people had it. This book was called Harry Potter. It was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It was the first book that she put out. That's uh, Sister Rollin. She put out this book and everybody was reading it. And every summer I'd get a new Harry Potter book. I'd read it. I'd imagine. But I still worship God. But there were some people that were not mature enough And as soon as Harry Potter came out All of a sudden we hearing about Harry Potter on CNN The gospel folk and the preachers and the churches saying Don't let your children hear this because it's witchcraft But when you know what you know Like you know what you know You're capable of digesting things But those things don't have a handle on you Because you got a handle on those things All right I bring it closer. Maybe a few of y'all remember there was a book, or rather not a book, it was a game that came out. It was called Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Grand Theft Auto. A lot of your nieces and nephews had it. They were doing all types of stuff on there they probably should not have been doing. Got exposed to some things they probably should not have been exposed to. But because we had parents who taught us the word of God, it was entertainment and it was not our lives. We didn't go shoot up nobody. We didn't go steal no cars. We didn't do nothing with no prostitutes because we didn't know what they were doing anyway. We did not do that stuff because we had what we needed to have in us. And all I'm saying to you is we're living in a world of overexposure and if you don't want your children if you don't want yourself to fall to the ways of the devil you gotta make sure every day you fill yourself up with the word of God that's the only way you gonna make it that's the only way your children gonna be able to handle it get the word of God in them and ask the spirit of God to dwell among them every day it's a new parent facing a new issue with their children because of stuff that their children have been exposed to that the parent did not even know they were exposed to. The Bible says train up a child in the way that they should go and when they get older it shall not depart from them. All I'm saying to you is if they are acting a fool you might need to get the training. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. Some of it is not your fault. But a lot of it is the fact that we letting TVs, we letting Androids, iPads, computers raise our babies. And if we're going to keep them in the safety of God, we got to train them with the word of God. I believe that maturation should determine your level of revelation. Everybody can't digest everything. And God says, if you're going to be all in, you got to handle yourself. If you're going to be all in, you got to take up your cross daily and follow me. You got to handle the concept of suffering. Because let's be honest, child of God, it's not fair sometimes that God calls his children to always be the big person. I want to slap somebody this week. Oh, no, no, no. You got you to be real. It's the Holy Spirit that will hold you when you want to get some folk because they doing stuff to you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, you got a real pastor. I'm going to be real with you. I praise the Lord that he has his hands on me because I would have been in the front page a long time ago messing with some of these folk. And what I'm saying is, if you're going to yield not to temptation, you got to make sure you're getting the word inside of you. Your flesh will want to act the fool. But your spirit will tell you to control yourself. So it is. That ain't fair. But that's suffering. And God says all of us will have to deal with some suffering. A homeboy by the name of Paul in the book of Corinthians, he had a thorn in his flesh. And Paul began to pray to God. He said, hey, I need this thorn out of me, God. I'm tired of dealing with this mess. And God said, no. 
Paul did like some of y'all. He prayed and he brought a prayer partner around. He said, hey, we're going to pray together. I'm going to pray the second time and I just know God going to take this away from me. And God said no. Third time, Paul, I don't know what he was doing as I leonized the text. I can only imagine now he's fasting and praying, fasting and praying. He didn't ripped his, his hair out of his beard. He is fasting and praying to God. I'll sacrifice anything. I'll do what you want me to do if you remove this thorn. And God said no. Child of God, the shout in that text is the reality that although he has a thorn, he's still living. And the problem with most of us is we're focusing on the thorns in our life and we're not focusing on the fact we're still living. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. Out of all the hell you've been dealing with, you still alive. Out of all the craziness you got to deal with, you still got your health and strength. Out of all the stuff the haters tried to take from you, God still bless you to see another day. I wish I had at least a hundred folk in the house that can praise God for the simple reality that I'm still alive. I might be having some issues. I might have some flaws. I might have some problems, but I'm still alive. Check it out. Paul prays. Says, God, take it out of me three times. God says no, because although you feel the pain of it, I put a purpose on it. God says, I caused this pain to be about you so that I can keep you humble. <laughs> Somebody say, take up your cross. Because majority of us are getting the big head as God elevates us. But God says, I need you to keep your cross real close and near and dear to you because I need you to be ever reminded that it ain't you, it's all me. He says, but my grace is sufficient. In your weakness. There is grace for your grief. There's grace for your greed. There's grace for your guiltiness. Check this out. I love it because he says, uh, if you're going to be committed to me, if you're going to be all in, he says, I need you to handle yourself uh, uh, because you, you, you can't do single stuff and be, be with me. You, you can't. Married folk, you can't, you can't act like a bachelor and you marry it. You, you can't. Y'all quiet in this Presbyterian church. Right? You, 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 can't, you, can't be, you can't have all single friends going out every weekend and you trying to be married. That, that ain't just the men, that's the women too. Y'all quiet up in this Presbyterian church. You, I'm trying to help somebody stay married. I need uh, all my married folk to make some noise because you can't act any old type of way. And be married. And, and then God says, God says, not only must you handle yourself in this marriage, because one plus one equals one, but he also says, you got to make sure that you learn, listen to me, that you're going to have to deal with some suffering in your relationships too. Because every day ain't going to be all good. Uh-oh, come on, somebody in the house that can tell the truth. Every day ain't always going to be sunshine. There's going to be some rainy days too. Y'all quiet. I got the mic. My wife loved me. Check this out. Every once in a while, I get on her nerves and she get on mine. Come on, real people in the room. Every once in a while, she got to lead a room and I got to lead a room too. Hello. It won't always be peaches and cream. But every relationship requires you to take care of yourself. For you to handle some suffering. But lastly, for you to surrender. God says, you can't be committed to me and them at the same time. I, I'm just not. Uh, I, I don't, God says, I don't believe in polygamy. <laughs> he says, you, you, you got to choose ye this day. Whom you going to serve. Y'all quiet in this church. God says, there's two masters and you can't serve two. You're going to have to choose one. Love one. And hate the other. You can't be with the devil and with me. Y'all got to stop this. You can't be an atheist and a Christian. You need to make up your mind. God says if you're going to be with me, you got to be all in. But what am I surrendering? God says you need to surrender your will to mine. What do we call it? Couples compromise. Yeah, y'all are quiet. Y'all gonna get all this. This is a whole premarital session right here on Sunday morning. It's compromise. You can't do what you want to do and not think about the other person you connected to. Yeah. 
Y'all real quiet. I had to learn them lessons. Lord have mercy. <laughs> First lady walker get you in check, you out of order. You're supposed to work together for where you're going because teamwork makes the dream. How you going to be on my team going the other way? What the Bible say? How can two walk together lest they agree? You ain't going to agree on everything, but you got to agree on some things uh, if you want God to bless what you're dealing with. All my single folk, they looking at me like, well, I ain't got nobody. You need to come to the play on October 14th. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you. I ain't no matchmaker. <laughs> but what God is saying is your relationship with me requires you to surrender your will to me God says I created you and when I created you I position you to do the purpose that I put inside of you and he says the problem with most Christians now is is that while they were down they do my will but as soon as they money got a little better, as soon as they could push their car and it start, not, not push it, but push the button, you forgot to do God's will and you start walking in your own will. God says, Pastor Walker, you got to remind them that they've got to marry my will to theirs. God says, if you stay in my will, it's my bill. You don't have to worry if you're doing what I told you to do. Can I tell you the problem with most of us? We're worrying because we ain't doing what he told us to do. I believe there's a few witnesses in the house that can testify. When you do what God tells you to do, the money will come. Lord have mercy. New home, we about to celebrate 134 years. I remember when we got there and there was 100 people here, but now we got way over 100 folk here because when you're doing God's will, the people will come too. You ain't got to worry about how it's going to get done if God told you to do it. God will attach his super to your natural. All you got to do is do the will and God will foot the entire bill. Take you to some places you ain't never been. Introduce you to some folk you ain't never known. Put you in some positions you never set in. God is able to take care of you. And I shouldn't have to work this hard because I think there's at least 50 folk in the room that can testify. I've been in some places that I didn't have the credentials to be in. I've done some things that I did not have the money to purchase. But God took care of me the entire time. I got to leave y'all here. But what God says is. If you surrender your will for mine, he says, I'll give you my will. And as you work my will, I'm going to take care of everything that you have need of. God said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'll give you all of these other things. What am I saying? God says, you ain't got to worry about stuff. Just keep your mind on the Savior. And if you keep your mind on the Savior, the Savior will give you all that you need to spend. And I wish I had a witness through here that will help me close my little Easter speech now and just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got a decision to make today. Are you going to be for God or are you just going to be a fan of God? Because God needs some people in this season that made up their mind. Uh, that if I with God uh, I said I'm going to be with God uh, because if I'm with God uh, everything's going to work out uh, we're living in a world now uh, where the Bible says uh, that God is coming back uh, and he's coming looking my daddy now uh, looking for an old church uh, without spot or wrinkle uh, he looking for some saints uh, that got him on their mind uh, and I'm just wondering uh, is there about 50 people now uh, that'll help me close my Easter speech uh, and say I got God I got him on my mind I said I need about 50 folk uh, that can say I got God uh, and I got him on my mind uh, and since I met Jesus, uh, 
spent some time with him uh, since I met Jesus uh, and I loved on him uh, since I met Jesus uh, and I surrendered my will uh, surrendered my will for his uh, I've done some stuff uh, that I did not want to do I've gone some places uh, that I did not plan to go to. Uh, I've seen some faces uh, that I did not ever want to see. Uh, but now, uh, because I did it all for God, uh, God, uh, he prospered me. Uh, he made me uh, unstoppable uh, because I serve the God uh, who owns uh, the cattle upon a thousand hills. Uh, I serve the God uh, who is able uh, to take care of me. Uh, I wish I had a witness now uh, that'll jump up off your feet uh, and tell somebody uh, you got to make up your mind uh, because for God I live. Uh, and for God I die I don't know about you but when I was a little boy in the old Baptist church they sung a song that said I will trust in the Lord I will treat everybody right I'm gonna do what he called me to do and they said I'll stay on the battlefield uh, and I'm looking for my saints now uh, that can shout I'm a soldier uh, in the army of the Lord uh, I made up my mind uh, and I made Jesus my choice uh, it started uh, a long time ago uh, but there is no doubt uh, there's no doubt in my mind uh, I didn't try uh, to lean on my family I didn't try uh, to lean on my friends uh, but it ain't nobody that can hold me up uh, like when I leaned uh, on the Lord. Uh, I need uh, somebody uh, to say I'm leaning uh, on the Lord. Uh, and because I'm leaning uh, on Jesus, uh, everything, I said everything is going to be all right. Uh, I said I need somebody to tell somebody it's going to be it's going to be, y'all ain't talking. Find somebody and tell them it's going to be all right. Be not weary in well-doing. If you chose the Lord in due season, you shall reap. If you think not, y'all ain't with me yet. Find somebody, turn to that neighbor and say, neighbor, I got a word for you. I chose the Lord and now I can tell you be not dismayed whatever betide you cause God he will take care of you take the brakes off your boy jump up to your feet if you know like I know it was God who took care of you Y'all to love on him. Y'all to clap for him. Y'all to shout for him. You ought to give him a praise. Because the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord open your mouth. Make some noise if you've decided to make Jesus. Go to the church, man. Find somebody and tell them I'm all in. Tell somebody, I'm all in. God says, you're going to have to deal with yourself. You're going to have to deal with some suffering. But lastly, you're going to have to surrender. This is your moment. I want to talk to you because this is decision moment right through here. God says you need to decide, are you for me or are you against me? There's no gray area here. If you don't know who Jesus Christ is, this is your opportunity to make him your choice. If you don't have a church home, this is your moment to connect with a church home that's going to give you what the word of God says. If you have a church home, you know who your pastor is. But you know you've been doing stuff that does not look like right relationship. You got to make sure that you give your life to Christ today. You got to rededicate yourself. Because the reality is all of us do some sinning after we become saved. 
But God says in Luke chapter 15, my arms are open wide to welcome you back home. I don't know who I'm talking to, but maybe you ain't been living up to what you know you're supposed to live up to. God said this is your moment to get a reset on your life. This is your moment to rededicate your life. Right now, today just come. Yeah. The doors of the church open. Everybody help us shout it. Say, say, come on. Come on. Come on, everybody open your mouth. Say, it. come on. Yeah, cut the music saying, come on, yeah, right now, today just come, I know the Lord will make a way, yes he will, there's somebody who's been through something before, I need you to help me, I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, it will. Yeah, yeah. I go to God. Go to God in secret prayer. Yeah, I leave all, leave all my burdens right there. I need you to help me say, I know the Lord. Yeah, hey, oh, yes, he will. If you tried him, come on, help me. Yes, he will. Ah, yeah. Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Mm, yeah. Oh, I, I know that the Lord. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yeah. In secret prayer, yeah, and I leave all, leave all my bed right there. Come on, y'all, help me. I know the Lord will. Oh, yeah, 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 yes, He will. I tried him and I know that he will. Yeah, yes, he will. Yeah, yeah, yes, he will. Hallelujah. I know the Lord. He will make a way. Yes, he will. Yeah. 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 I got a savior. I know, I know the law. There will make a way. I need all my living witnesses. Jump up to your feet one more time just for me. Yeah, yes, he will. You helping your neighbor, you don't even know it. Yes, he will. Uh, yeah. Ah, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Oh, 
I know that the Lord will make a way. I know that the Lord will. I know the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make a way. Yeah. Oh. oh. God. Good afternoon, Pastor and New Home Church family. Today we have several coming on the Christian experience. Uh, so please hold your applause until the end. We have a Radrisha Moore Jones coming on the Christian experience. Please stand. We have a Shantre P Peters coming on the Christian experience. We also have Ivanka Crenshaw coming for baptism. And we have Quint Hunter coming for prayer. Amen. New home, make some noise. Yeah. Amen. Look at what God is doing. He continues to add to our family. Can y'all come to the center for me? We definitely thank God for your presence. And I believe wholeheartedly that you're not here uh, by way of happenstance. I believe God ordains everything that he does. And I believe ultimately that there's something that he wants to get to you or something he wants to get out of you. Uh, but I believe he has put us together because he understands that what you give here, you're going to get back some type of way. We want you to be a participator, not a spectator. We want you to be someone who can grow with us and go with us. We want you to be someone uh, who looks at and even learns from what God is doing in this house. Because I believe because you're connected now, what you do in this house and what God does for this house, it's going to happen for your house. Y'all going to clap for that or not? It's going to happen for your house. It's going to happen for your house. Now. Uh, we definitely accept you. We believe wholeheartedly that if you desire to be connected with the ministry, that you're going to be connected with the ministry. And we are excited because that tab, that card that they're giving you, uh, that card is going to give you all the information that you need to have access to us in everything that we provide as the Lord provides to us. That is Bible study on Wednesdays. We're on Facebook. Uh, you have the opportunity to cook your food, eat your food, and still learn about God's word. Uh, we have Friday fulfillment every Friday at 7 o'clock. Of course, we have worship on Sundays, and we have midday prayer, midday pick-me-up, we call it, on Mondays and Thursdays. That's a prayer moment, about 30 minutes at 12 noon. We want you to get logged in, whatever you can do. Now, we know you can't do everything, but we do believe you can do something. Whatever talent, whatever gift God's given you, we want you to be able to use it here because I believe God has great things in store for you. Eyes have not seen nor ear heard. The great things that he has in store for you. And new home, what do we say? Welcome home. Welcome home. They were loud, wasn't they? That's how you turn your head. You didn't expect that. This, this, this loud, rambunctious crowd, this is your new brothers and sisters in Christ. You're now family. We call people who are dating but have not committed. They are cousins. Some of y'all were cousins, but now y'all are family. So we greet each of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and we're excited about what God's about to do in your life. All right, so at this moment, we have our, I was about to say ambassador's assembly. What's the <laughs> Assimilation. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Our assimilation ministry is over here. Our sister Snell is waving her hand. Sister Brittany is waving her hand. You can go in that, uh, that direction. I want you to grab your uh, purse. I know. I, got, I want you to grab your purse. I want you to grab your belongings so that you can go with them. They got some information to give to you. They have some information to give to you. So if you join by way of Christian experience, you can go in that direction at this moment. Amen. Come on, give God praise for them. Right, so uh, come here you, for prayer. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome. I'm new to the area. I moved here from Charlotte, North Carolina. I went to um, New Beginnings. Okay. Awesome. Well, we definitely thank God for you. You're new to the city of Montgomery, Alabama, uh, but now you're connected to New Home Our Megs. So I believe. Yeah, I believe sometimes when we move from. Uh, far distances we can feel like we're all alone but I believe and I want to tell you that everything you need is in this house 
This is a big network. And God has given us everything that you might ever need, okay? So I want you to lean on us, depend on us, and you've made the best decision you ever could make in your life, giving your life to Christ. She committed today. Y'all ought to make some noise for that. So I have a few questions to ask you. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. Do you believe that he hung, bled, and died for your sins? Yes. Do you believe that he rose early Sunday morning? Yes. Will you serve him for the rest of your life? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer with me. All of you who believe in power of prayer, please stretch your right hand towards the altar. Grab those things for me, Rev. Stretch your right hand towards the altar. And you just repeat after me. Say, Father. Father. I need you. I need you. Father. Father. I can't make it. I can't make it without you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Come into my life. Make me over. <laughs> make me over. Uh huh. And make me right. And make me right. And I will. And I will. Forever. Forever. Follow you. Follow you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, y'all. Give God praise for her. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome. Let's pray, let's pray. Father God, we thank you that in spite of all that has been seen, that God, you're able to change and shift and move. We thank you, Father God, that even what seems daunting, you have control over. Moments, Father God, where we don't know which way to go, I thank God that you allowed her to turn to you. That as her cousin, Father God, is, is sitting in the hospital on life support, we know, Father God, you're already there. And we know, Father God, that when the doctors have no answers, you've got plenty. Yes, so, God, it's our prayer that you touch him and you'd heal him, Father God. It's our prayer, Father God, that you take care of him and watch over him, Father God. It's our prayer, Father God, that you do what no doctor is able to do. It's our prayer, Father God, that you'll heal like only you can heal. You move like only you can move. You'd comfort this family like only you could comfort them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we believe, Father God, that you're able to do anything but fail. So we call upon you now, Father God, your wonder-working power, that Holy Ghost power that can do what no other power can do. We're calling on you, Father God. Heal in the mighty name of Jesus comfort in the mighty name of Jesus Father God allow them to know that the devil might put a period but God has a way of drawing a comma this is not the end because God has more in store for him and now God we believe this because we've seen you do it we've seen you work miracles we've seen your wonder working power you kept us Father God you never left us Father God so now we ask you to do what you've done before. And God, even in this moment, we won't wait till the battle's over. We expect it to be done already in the mighty name of Jesus. We expect things to get better. We expect a good report. We will praise you. We will clap our hands. We will shout hallelujah because we know it's already done. It's sealed and delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. All of God's children shout amen, amen, amen again. Come on, give God praise for what he's doing. All right. We're getting ready to go. We're getting ready to go. But I believe God has done what he needed to do today. And I believe that there's some soil in the room that those seeds were deposited in. And you still got a decision to make. You still got a decision to make. I, I just really want you to hear this from me. Uh, time is winding up. And God is looking for a people that don't just flaunt that they go to church. He needs some people that are committed to him. He needs some people that are committed to him. And I don't want you to be caught with your work undone. I need you to get your life and yourself in order. We're getting ready to go. Y'all can stay in. We're getting ready to go. Is there anything else, Chairman? No. First time, second time, visitors, wave your hand at your boy. Come on, let's give God praise for them. Amen. Come on, a new home. Amen.
We thank God for you visiting with us today. We pray that you'll be back another Sunday. Uh, I promise you uh, that God has great things in store for those uh, who are able uh, to be in church and be a part of what he's doing and hear what he's saying. If you apply it, I believe it's going to bless your life. And I believe wholeheartedly uh, that something was sung or said that will bless you uh, for the rest of this week. Did not Hollywood sing? Did he sing? Did he sing? Did he sing? Did he sing? <laughs> okay. Wait, wait till he put his glasses on. <laughs> Hollywood. Now you know why I call him Hollywood. But we thank God for him um, and all that God is doing through his life. This male chorus was marvelous this morning, weren't they? Yeah. Amen, amen. Uh, it's my prayer. Now, new home. Yeah, I can read lips. You were saying it's slower, and I was really trying to read it. There. So she said this. She was reminding me, I need all of my ministry leaders, all of my ministry leaders, I need you to stay back for at least five minutes. Please don't run to the door, and you're a ministry leader. I want to see you uh, in the fellowship hall. Oh, you're telling me about something else. Amen. Thank you for the reminders. Okay, leaders, I need you in the sanctuary. But there are some cake, there's some cupcakes and ice cream for the graduates of the Next Step class. So those of you who graduated today, uh, your stole, that little um, honor cord is going to get you in the party, all right? If you ain't got no honor cord, you can't come to the party, amen? Uh, so for those of you who graduated, there's some cake and some ice cream for you back there. Um, and I think that was it. Cake and ice cream. Leaders, please stay in the sanctuary after service. What's that? It's another thing. T-shirts are being... Uh, uh, distributed in the fellowship hall. It was one more thing. Okay, I'm going to a third service. I got to preach a pastor's anniversary, Pastor uh, uh, Gordine, over at the Engage Christian Church, I believe. It's off of McGee Road. It's right next to Renfro's. I would love to see you there. Family, there's only two things that I would always ask for you to come with me uh, to, and that's a church anniversary or a pastor's anniversary. If you have the time, uh, come support this man of God and his pastor's anniversary. If you don't just pray for your past, okay? Now, don't say you praying and you got time. You just being trifling. You just being trifling. Uh, but we thank God for it. Did y'all learn anything today? Amen. Amen. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard all you have planned for me. And nothing, and nothing can separate me from his love. Because there's so much more still worth fighting father god we thank you for what you told us we thank you dear god for what you've shown us we thank you for the information we thank you for the moments of celebration and we pray father god declare and decree that there shall be application in our lives we shall be committed to you because you've been committed to us even while we were sinning you died on the cross for our sins god we say thank you you didn't have to do it but you did it for me you did not have to shift it, but you shifted it for me. And so, God, we are grateful today because of all that you've done for us. And we don't want to leave this place, Father God, without your precious Holy Spirit. We ask that your Holy Spirit will walk with us, talk with us, go with us to our next destination and lead us and guide us, Father God, throughout the course of this week. It's our prayer, Father God, that we've been made better and the better that we receive, we will distribute to others. We'll distribute grace to others this week. We'll distribute love to others this week. We'll be better to other people than they've been to us this week. God, we love you and we praise you. And now as we leave this place, we pray this prayer unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be majesty dominion and power forever and evermore all of God's children shout amen, amen. shout amen. amen amen one more time all right Pastor Walker loves you please be safe and have a great week eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard all you have planned for me and nothing can separate me from your love.